The message this morning in the Greater Than series is love is greater than fear. Love is greater than fear. And I know everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, I totally know that. But, but do you know it? You know, do we really know it? Because when this gets down into us, our lives are changed. Our lives are made new. We become a different person, and, and our life is, is exponentially better. It's amazing. See this fear thing. We, we all have fears. There's different things that we run into in our lives, situations, issues with our families, jobs, you know, money, bullies, what have you. And there's fear. We all fear. I'd, I'd have you raise your hand if you have a fear, but I know everybody should raise their hand that they've had a fear or will have a fear or are dealing with it right now. It's just the truth. But I want to talk about to, today that, that perfect love casts out fear, that it drives that out, that love is greater than fear, that God did these things that he has done so that we can walk out our life not in fear but in love in his grace, in his peace, right? Yes. So there's lots of fear. There's only one fear, though, that is good for us, and that's the fear of God. And that is crucial in our lives, the fear of God. See, the fear of God actually, actually drives out all other fears. Just that perfect love. See, the fear of God is what's able to bring us to this knowledge and, and and receiving this perfect love from God that will cast out fear. But fear of God. What does the word fear mean? You guys all kind of know or whatever, but to expect or worry about something that's going to maybe harm you or hurt you. But also it means, uh, you know, in a spiritual sense, to, they all say, you know, if you look up the definitions in your Bible about you know, fear, the fear of God, or, or what have you. And, and it's, it gives you this definition of, of a reverential awe. But, you know, <clears throat> to me, you know, that's this secondary definition that they give you. But I would say that a reverential awe is, is not really what I believe I've seen in the Bible whenever somebody encounters the presence of Jesus. Because I believe they really are afraid. Now, not afraid that God is going to attack them or hurt them, but afraid that my life is not what it needs to be to be standing in front of the almighty creator that created the heaven and the earth. I just don't know that I'm going to be able to stand here because God is standing. This fear of God is is something that like he is everything and I am nothing and I just I don't know you know in the Bible is standing in the presence of God is you know you walk away glowing uh, you know it's, I'm serious you you walk away and, and it's shining out of you you know just because you saw the backside of Jesus or you know, the presence of God is in front of you and you fall down on your face. You can't even stand up and, you know, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips, you know, come cleanse me. And I, I, I can't even be here in front of your presence. I mean, that is being in the presence of God. It's not just like, oh, I, I revere you, God. I'm in awe of you. No, it's like, God's there, and I'm on the floor, you know? It's, it's I'm shaking. I'm shaking because my body can't handle being in, in, in the presence of, an, of the Almighty God, of who He is, what He is, what He's created, what He's done. That is, oh, it's not just an awe. It's, it is a fear, not, not that He's going to hurt me, but, but that, he is who he is. And I'm just, 
I'm changed and shaking and falling on the floor, glowing because I'm here before. Amen? Amen. In this book that Tori and I have called My Name is Hope, there's the guy writes and he's talking about the fear of God and, and he's saying something similar to what I'm talking about now where this fear of God, it's like, you know, he says it's just, just awe, reverential awe doesn't seem like a good enough explanation to me. And, and he just talks about this story. The story, he says, you know, my family, we would go on a vacation and, and there was this amazing place out on the, uh, in the ocean where we'd go off, over uh, to see this beautiful place where it juts out into the ocean, waves crashing up against the rocks and all this. He said, but we had to walk on this path that went on this cliff and there's rocks right next to you, you know, going straight up and, and then on your other side, there's rocks going straight down to the ocean and the waves are crashing below you, these huge waves and it's splashing up and, and, and the wind is coming and just blowing your clothes and your hair and, and, and you have this, you know, you're kind of shaking and you have this fear and this anxiety that, that I, oh, this is, I don't know, it's so amazing, it's a little bit scary, it's, I don't know, it's just so much to take in. But he says, but this is the creation. How much more should we have that respect and awe and, and be shaking and, and that fear of the creator who created that thing that was one minute little thing in his whole creation? of the universe how much more should we be in awe look i just you know is it okay if i just put this out here lay it out for you this looks the fear of god but this is the only fear that is good the only fear that we should have in our lives but there's so many others so many different things that we worry about that we're scared about So many things. But the problem is, so many times we try to try to get rid of them or, or deal with them in all the wrong ways. We try to bury it, bury it deep inside. We try to run from it, hide from it. We try to do all these different things to try to get away from fear, but, but really there's only one way that fear is dealt with, that leaves us and those around us better off, and that's love. That's what the Bible says. Love, right? Perfect love casts out fear. I want to read that scripture. The premise of love is greater than fear is not that we should have more love and less fear or that we have so much love that, you know, it starts to you know, we get to push out the fear because we're doing so great. But it's that perfect love casts out fear. First John 4, 17 through 19 says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears is, has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loves us. We love him. I love that. Because he first loves us. He loved us first. It's really nothing that I can do or you can do. It's not like it's my decision, but he made the decision to do everything to make us, to get us to a place where we could be back in relationship with him. It's because of him he first loved us. This word perfect here, perfect love casts out fear. I was thinking about it, you know, like to study the words a little bit. I'm, you know, of course, no, you know, wordsmith. I always tell Tori, she's so much better with words and stuff. She says she's not, but anyway, just listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. 
so much better writing and all with knowing these words, but I like I like to learn, you know, I want to learn. And I don't want to read something in the Bible and and not really know what it means. Because perfect love, you're like, okay, perfect love. You know, do it if I if I love and do it the right way. But that's not what this word means. That's why we gotta study it, right? This word teleos, perfect love, perfect. It means brought to its end or finished. See, that's a little different, right? Not that I just did this love thing the right way, but this love that's brought to its end and finished. This is, this is love that really I cannot do even myself, but something that God has to give to me and has given me so that I can walk out of here without fear. Perfect love. Love that's brought to its, of course, it's God. So all of the things that he is are perfect and complete and done, right? He doesn't have partial love. He doesn't, you know, have love that he's working on. His love is perfect. It's complete. It's everything that it needs to be. <sighs> perfect love. Perfect love goes beyond. See, that's what God did. He went beyond anything that we possibly could have, could have done or imagined doing. It goes beyond. It goes beyond our wants and desires. See, fear, what is fear? Fear is self-concern. It's worrying about myself, right? I mean, that's what fear is. Am I going to get hurt? Am I going to be accepted? Is somebody going to be mean to me or, you know, am I going to, am I going to end up not having anything in a year or so many different things. But fear is self-concern. I have to worry about myself. I'm, I'm afraid because I don't know that I'm going to be okay. But perfect love casts out fear. Amen. There's no fear in love. Perfect love drives it out. <sighs> Light drives out darkness. Love casts out fear, right? When the lights are off in this building, it's dark. But all of a sudden, you turn the light bulb on, and darkness just goes away. It's cast out. It's driven out just by the flick of a switch, you know? It's... The same thing with love and fear. See, love is greater than fear. Light is greater than dark, right? Where when there is light there, the darkness is not. When there is love there, the fear is not. Perfect love, the fear is not. Turn on the switch. Turn on the light. Drive out the darkness. Turn on the love, the perfect love. Drive out the fear. That's what we have to do. It's not me, again. It's, it's not us that does it. It's, but it's what we get from him. It's that perfect love that he's so graciously done everything for us to grab hold of so that we could have that love that is perfect in him that we could use it, that we could let it flow through us. Oh. <clears throat> it's not about really our love to, or our, our power to, to harness this love. It's our power to, to use this love or, or even have it's, it's about our willingness to accept his perfect love. Yes. If I'm willing to accept his perfect love and allow it to invade my life, and I say invade, I just, look, it's like light. It's, it doesn't just gently come in. You ever turn on the lights in, in a room that's been dark? It's harsh. It, it invades you. You know, you're like, ah, I can't see what's going on. But I imagine his perfect love coming. And it's, 
just allowing his perfect love to invade your life, to pour over you, to pour through you, to move through you. And all of a sudden, it just, boom, and it, the fear is gone. Not because I did it. We can't push it out. We can't push out the fear. You know, we try. We try to do everything we can to, you know, to get away from this fear, but it's, it's accepting his perfect love that drives out fear. 1 John 4, 8 through 10, it says, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. First of all, let me stop there. Ah, I don't know about you, but that's, it, that makes me stop and think. Just that first statement there. He who does not love does not know God. Uh, hold on a second. Let me go back. Let me go back and make sure I've been loving people. Have we all been loving people? Have we been who we're supposed to be toward those around us, to our coworkers, our family, our husband or wife, our kids? Because it says right here, it says, he who does not love does not know God. And so I'm just saying, let this love, this perfect love invade us. Let's live out his love and know him, know him truly, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son. In this is love. See, in this is love. What? In, in what is love? That he loved us first. That's what he's saying. He's kind of making a point here. He's like, no, no, I want you to know that it's not because you loved him. It's not because you did anything to get to this point that you're good enough or you did the works, you know, you, you read your Bible for four hours a day or you did this. I mean, we need to spend time doing those things, reading our Bible and praying and spending time with God, but it's not about the action. It's about the relationship, you know? It's, it's about the love being manifested in our life, that perfect love. In this huh, is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. See, God is love. It just is him. He didn't create it. He didn't create it with us, with Adam and Eve, or with the birds or anything like that. He didn't create it, it just is him. He is love. He exudes love, he oozes it. He's, it's just part of him, it's the greatest part of him. It's the part that drives him and compels him, that compassion to reach out toward us. He is love. See, where God is, there is love. Oh, in verse 9 of 1 John 4, in this the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. God's love, his love was demonstrated to us in this act of selflessness, of not thinking about himself, of not worrying about what people would think about him or if people would accept him or his son for what he did. Not worrying, not having fear. See, because God is perfect love, because that's just who he is, there's no place for fear in him. And that's what, I mean, in Christ dying on the cross for us, that's what he's coming, what he did dying on the cross so that we could have the relationship with God, so that he could live in our lives, and so that we could grab 
hold of that perfect love and that we could walk out our lives without those fears also. But again, it's not about me or how good I am or how good you are or that you are strong enough to push away the fear or hold it down or, or whatever. It's your being able to allow his perfect love into your life. Yes. And just like that light driving the darkness away, his love, his perfect love, just cast it out immediately. Amen? Ephesians 2, 4. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Even when we were dead in our own trespasses. See, he didn't do it because... You know, a couple of us are good people, are morally sound, you know, that we haven't done anything bad lately, you know. He didn't do it because he didn't do it for any reason but the sheer fact that he loved us. And even in our trespasses, even when I'm not good enough, when, when, when you aren't good enough yourself, that you didn't do something to, you know, to get yourself to a point where God could accept you or, or me. You know, I didn't do something that allowed me to be at a point where God could accept me, but no, it's because his perfect love, because he loved us. That no matter where I was, no matter where you were, no matter how far, that his love reached beyond, right? Beyond fear, beyond worry. Yeah. See, how much could God have feared giving his son? I mean, think about this. I mean, think about how we would fear giving our child to, you know, be sacrificed for somebody else so that they could be saved. And it's, it's really hard to think about. I can't even imagine. And, of course, the fear creeps up in us just trying to think about it, you know. It's, oh, my gosh, I, can't, I don't, no, 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 I can't even think about that. And, of course, fear can't be in God because of his perfect love, because that's who he is, and it's all in him and is him. So he can't have that fear, but what if? You know, think about it. Think about if it. it's just like, you know, the devil trying to tempt Jesus, you know? I mean, those, what if there was a chance that he could fear? You know, do you, do you think that they're going to accept my son? Do you think that they're going to, you know, be grateful or that, you know, do you think they're even going to, are they going to laugh and turn their back and walk away from this thing that I've done for them? Do you, do you think they're going to know why I've done it, what I'm doing for them, and what it will help them to, to become and, and to be just, do you know? I mean, think about that. Couldn't he have, if there was any place for fear in him, been so terrified, so worried with self-concern that, that we weren't going to accept him. But there was no place. There was no place for that because of perfect love. And that's what he's trying to tell us. See, love is greater than fear. Love is greater. Perfect love is greater than fear. It will cast it out, just like light casts out darkness. It will. And he's saying, I give my son to die on the cross for you. I give him so that we could be in relationship, so that we can have this closeness, so that my perfect love can be inside of you and flow through you so that you could live a full, 
whole life, strong and in power, right? He wants, to live a, wants us to live a life of power and of strength, with sound mind, right? Fear is not a sound mind. Anxiety, worry, self-concern, this is not a sound mind. God has created us and wants us to live with a sound mind. He wants us to live in his perfect love in us and flowing through us. God keeps telling us over and over through his word that he loves us so much. And of course, I mean, you think, oh, that's nice. But I think he was like, I'm just going to have to put this in there so much. <laughs> and hopefully they'll get it. Because I know, because he knows, you know, he knows everything. Because I know that, that fear will, will be debilitating. It will drive them into the corner, into the darkness. Fear will, will debilitate them. It, fear will, will try to rise up any moment, every moment of their life if it is allowed. Fear will be so invasive. And he just says, I will have to tell them so much that I love them. And that perfect love, that love casts out fear, love drives out fear. And I just pray and I hope that they will understand and know and allow that to live and move and, and flow through them. Hmm. Octavius Winslow, awesome name. I love it. If I had another, another boy... Tori's shaking her head. I did the same thing first service. You'd think she'd play along this time, but she says no still. Octavius Shelton. I mean, come on. That'd be awesome. Octavius Win Winslow, a 19th century pastor and writer, he wrote this, and, and it just like, oh, to me, it's like, I don't, I don't know. It almost just like, knocked me over. It was just the statement and what it says. But he said, who delivered up Jesus to die? Not Judas for money, not Pilate for fear. Not the Jews for envy, but the Father for love. Who? Who delivered up Jesus to die? It, no, no, no. It, it wasn't Judas, even though some people think, you know, oh man, that guy Judas, that sucker he gave Jesus up and it, you know it wasn't the Jews it, it wasn't Pilate it wasn't all that but but it was the father for love because he first loved us he first loved us that's why he sent his only son to die on the cross for us he sent him he didn't you know allow him to go down to the earth to try to hopefully help and do a little good, and then all of a sudden he was taken off guard. But it was the Father for love that sent the Son to die on the cross for us. For love, he says, for love, because he loved us, because he has this perfect love that is complete, that drives out fear, that fear cannot be in the vicinity of. Because of that, he sent his son to die on the cross for us. He sent his son so that we could have that perfect love also. That we could have his perfect love in us and flowing through us. Amen? Amen. Amen.